Hello my friends! Glad to see you made it! We are gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, He's alive! My friends, let's start their prayer. Today I would like to go over uh, the, the parable of, of the Good Samaritan. Or the story of the Good Samaritan. So, if you want, if you would, open your Bibles to Luke chapter 10 verse 25. And let's pray like this. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, gracious God, to, to glorify your name and to know you better and to understand your wisdom and your love for us. Father, we ask that you would rain your Holy Spirit upon this video and anyone who watches it. Bless them in their homes and their families. Gracious God, we, we ask you for forgiveness for, for all those times we have walked it and stepped on your toes when we shouldn't, shouldn't have. And, and forgive us for our debts. For we have and are forgiving all those who, who have trespassed against us. Gracious God, give us a, a desire in our heart to, to seek you and know you and want to be in your presence always. Come and unveil yourself to us today. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. So, let's talk about the, the Good Samaritan. And, and, you know, we always talk about, you know, the, the teachers or, or the Pharisees and the hypocrites and hypocritical Christians and all that, you know, a hypocrite's like somebody who says I'm going to do something and, and they don't do it, you know, or they might tell you all the rules, hey man, you go and you live this way and you got to do these things, but, but here they are uh, living uh, uh, totally contradicting the, what they're telling you, you know, it's the old saying, practice what you preach. <laughs> And that's the thing with Jesus and the Bible and God. You know, kind of noticed how Jesus, when he does whatever he does, he don't tell people, hey, go and you go and do this. And go tell them, those Pharisees and those hypocrites, stop doing like that. You guys stop. Actually, it's kind of more like Jesus was out there working, doing the stuff, and, and this is more like what he said, hey, go tell them what we just did. No, no, go tell them what to do. Go, go tell them what, uh, what we just did. You know, so, so it wasn't, hey, you know, words. It was, hey, go tell them what, what we're doing. You know, and, and that's the thing with walking in, in faith. And, you know, throughout all the Bible and the characters, it's faith in God. And, and a lot of it is surrender. See, you got to understand that, that God is our Father. And, and He loves us. And that's the word believing. Do you believe that you are God's child? You know, do you believe that you're the daughter of God? Or do you believe you're the son of God? And when you believe that, well, then things kind of turn around and change. And so, I want to talk today about the Good Samaritan. And, you know, we hear many stories, like I say, about the hypocrites. And then we hear the story about, you know, hey, be the Good Samaritan. And you need to be the Good Samaritan. And I want to talk a little bit about God. <laughs> and faith in, in God and what I found out in my life and, and what the reality of, of this story kind of has played out in, in my life and what that story looks like in, in reality and maybe it's different for you and I don't know but, but for me this is the way it lived out so let's read over that chapter 10 Verse 25 of the book of Luke. On one occasion, a lawyer stood up to pose him this problem, to ask a question. Teacher, what must I do to inherit everlasting life? That's a 
the question, right? What do we got to do to, to get eternal life? What is eternal life? Right? That, that's the question. Everybody, you go to church, ask that question. What, are, who, how, what do we do for to gain eternal life? And what is eternal life? And, and many people have many different answers to that question. But this is the answer God gave us. This is the answer our Father gave us through His Word. And God's Word is truth. So let's listen to the truth. Jesus answered him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? Right? And that word law has been changed from Torah. What's the first five books of Moses say? What's the Torah say? Because in the Torah you have laws, regulations, the precepts, statutes of God. How to live a good and prosperous life. And you know, that's the thing. What does the law say and how do you read it? He replied, You shall love the Lord your God. And notice it's always throughout the Bible, the Lord your God. And that's very important because, you know, we could use God Almighty. We could use the word God, Lord. And all those words are a reverence to God. It's like, we're not going to use God's real name, you know, because, like, say his name was William. We don't want to call you William. We're going to call you Bill. And so the proper name for God and what they did, they didn't want to blaspheme God's name. They revered, had such reverence for God's name, they wouldn't even speak it. And so they, Lord, Lord, and so they wouldn't blaspheme the name of God. So there's always, and you'll see throughout the, the holy scriptures of God, the, the Lord your God, the Lord our God, the Lord. And Adonai, that, that, that word is Adonai in Hebrew. In English, it's Lord. So, it's very important because Jesus Christ is the Lord, our God. We, we, nobody knew who God was, but today we know who God is because Jesus came, God came from heaven in, in, in flesh, man. So, let's listen to what God says about this story. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Right? And this is the teacher, one of the teachers, a lawyer, and a lawyer is like, uh, you know, not so much the pastor or the Bible study guy, but he's the guy who goes through and makes sure that the pastor and all those guys are following directly straight down the rules of God. So he knows all the Torah, he knows all the law, he knows every letter of it. And that's his job going out and making sure, you know, like, like a watchman, making sure the churches and that are following the law. And sometimes, you know, uh, problems would arise in churches. You see this all the time. And what do we do? You know, we got a problem, and we go to the church doctrine, we go to the church bylaws, and the lawyer comes out and, and would settle matters for you. So he knows this is eternal life. And Jesus said, You have answered correctly. Do this, and, and you shall live. But because he wished, right? Because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Right? And this is what he was, you know, implying. Who, you know, here's the, the Jews, you know, and being oppressed by, by Rome. Who, who's my neighbor? The, the Romans? The Babylonians? Right? And we can look at that today and say, who, Who's our neighbor? The Muslims? Right? 
Who, who's our neighbor? And who is it that, that we should be loving? Who is it that, that we should be caring for? The, the Christians? The, oh, the Christians? Oh, the members of my church. Are those my neighbors? Right? The body of Christ. Is that my neighbors? And that's what he was implying and asking. Kind of like a, a, a smart aleck question. Right? Jesus replies. There was a man, and this is the reply. There was a man going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. What kind of a man? A Jew? We don't know. A, a man. So see, we always talk about those people, but how come we never talk about the man? That, that man. Right? And listen. And a man who fell prey to robbers, they stripped him, beat him, then went off, leaving him half dead. Right? We, we talk about all the people, but what, what about the man who, who was beaten, left half dead, but by the robbers? See, what, what, if, what, what if you were that man? What, what if we were that man? What if we are that man? What, what if... Those thieves and those robbers that come and beat that guy down on his walk. What if we made that thief and the robber like Satan, the devil, and his demons? And they came in and beat you down. Beat you down. Beat you down emotionally. Beat you down uh, mentally. You know, that's the thing too. Is sometimes, you know, we can't see mental illness. The person who has it, oh boy, they know all about it, and it's very real to them. But but all of us, you, you can't see mental illness. You know what I mean? You, you can see the robber guy who's beat up, laying on the ground, all bloodied up. But, but can you see depression? Can, can you see bipolar? Can, can you see a schizophrenia? You can't see those things. And so we got to be aware. Who, who, who is that man beat up there by, by those thieves and those robbers? You know, sometimes bipolar, sometimes depression, those things come from abuse. Sometimes we're children and, and we're being abused. Mom, dad, uh, uncles, what, whatever it could be. Older siblings could, could be abusing us. And, um, it could be broken. One of, one of those people, just like that man, laid there half dead. Some people are half dead spiritually. They're, they're waiting to die. You know, you can't see mental illness, but, but the people going through it, uh, the best relief that they can possibly think of is going home to death. Because that's how broken they are. That, that's how beat down they are. And we need to be aware of uh, Good Samaritan. You know, you could be that person. They're broke down, waiting, crying out for help, needing help. But what if there's no Good Samaritan? You know, what if there's nobody there to, to help you? And so let's finish our little story here. Because you got to remember, the Levites and the Pharisees, and that's the two people he kind of calls out on that, are religious people. Very super religious people. Sometimes as religious people and young missionaries and that, we, we oh, we got to go and pass out the word of God, right? And there we are. Ready to run out, and God wants me to deliver the word of God. And there, I got my little tiny Bibles, you know, you see them all the time, they're little tiny Bibles, and there you got them, whole pocket full, and you're handing them out. There's a poor man, a bum, or whatever, and there you just hand him a Bible, and hey, good luck with that, read that Bible. There you go. And they're down the road, and you go home, and wow, hi. 
passed out the word of God to many people. But but thing is, is what God really wants is you to care for that person. To, to care for them. And, and you understand why and what's so important about the care for one another. You know, we don't want to be hypocrites. We don't want to be, be the one trying to only save uh, ourselves. And, and it doesn't come through the word of God, salvation. Right? Is that what that said? It, everlasting life comes through 40 years of, of reading this? Uh, does it say everlasting life comes from 20 years of going to church? Paying alms? No. What did it say? Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And, and love your neighbor as you would yourself. Because you'll find in life, when you're that person, you know, sometimes we lose our job. Sometimes something goes wrong in life and we begin to lose everything. And we need help. Sometimes we could be that person losing our mind. And we need help. And then we call our friend. Or our sister. Or, or whoever it may be that we think that that person loves us. Cares for us. And then all of a sudden, you know, the phone stops ringing. Friends can't be found. Right? You're calling out to... For help, and all of a sudden, you know, the change of the phone number, things, things of that nature, and, and and why is that? Why is that? And then we get so frustrated and upset and mad. This world is abandoned. How could you say you're even a friend or anything of that nature when you just abandoned me in my time of great need? You know, many people out there in the streets are, are, have a broken mind. No, not one chooses to be there, but, but something's broken. And we, we say to them, they chose it. But we say to them, oh, if you'd only quit drinking, if you'd only clean your act up, if you'd only stop sinning, right? And, and, but God sees it different. He sees what you can do. And if today, all you can do is wake up, God sees that. He sees your strength and the ability to wake up. One more day. We're, we're fighters. The reason you're watching the video today is you're a fighter and you're not a quitter. And that's God's children. And they always get back up. And they're never knocked down, down and out to, for forever. So let's go and finish this little story here. And so, he went off and left him half dead, the robbers. So verse 31, a priest happened to be going down the same road, and he saw him but continued on. Likewise, there was a Levite who came the same way. And he saw him and went on. You know, remember in those days, you know, they had a lot of rituals in that. And, and to touch a, a person of that, see, it's a Pharisee and a Levite or a priest and a Levite. They had to go home and take like seven showers and wash all their clothes and go through this whole great big ceremony to, to cleanse themselves for touching uh, an unclean person. Right? And, and so there it was all about the, the traditions and these things. And a lot of that stuff was man-made. And God didn't give it to them. God didn't give it to them. They, they invented it along their way. And began, you know, forcing that stuff upon people. Making their rules and their regulations more important than, than other human beings. And we see that all the time today. You know, we, we think that our worth sometimes could come through insurance and those things. And that makes us to be a worthy human being. You know, and we forget that some people just haven't the ability to take care of themselves. Because they've been beat down 
by the devil and his demons, the robbers and thieves. And they're left there half dead. They're left there half dying. So, but a Samaritan who was on a journey, who was journeying uh, along his way, and, and remember, Samaritans and Jews didn't get along, and it was like forbidden to even talk to a Samaritan. You know, they were low lives. If you're a Christian, then they were like a Muslim. If you're a Muslim, then they were like Christians. And they hated the people. They hated the most hated enemy. Right there, comes down, walking down the road, but has compassion. But it shows compassion. Notice that this ain't just your normal compassion. This is a, a, a agape. He, he makes a point. He's showing you this is agape love. This isn't uh, go and call 9-1 for this person who, who's hurt on the street. No, 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 no. He didn't call somebody. He, he took it upon himself. Out of his own pocket, pulls the money out to the innkeeper, right? So let's listen. But a Samaritan who was journeying along, uh, along came on him and was moved to pity at, at the sight. He approached him and dressed his wounds, pouring oil and wine. He then hoisted him and put him on his own beast and brought him to an inn where he cared for him there and, and he continued caring for him. Granted in that day, you know, they don't have hospitals and things like that, but you know, do you think all those people out there in, in, in the streets and all those people who are broke down in, in depression or uh, some sort of mental illness that they're sitting there in the hospitals getting taken care of? And they're not. They're not. Not by another human being, anyway. So, the next day, he took out two silver pieces and gave it to the innkeeper with the request, look after him, and if there is any further expense, I will repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was the good neighbor to the man who fell in with the robbers. And the answer came. The one who treated him with compassion. Jesus said to him, Then go and do the same. Because what I found out in my life is when bad things come your way, your friends and loved ones kind of like scatter. And they go away. You know, people are out there stuck living in homelessness and hopelessness. Not a home because everybody left them. Scattered. Left them to die. And so who's that good neighbor? You know, where are we going to find the good neighbor? Because what if there is no good neighbor? And that's the thing. Jesus Christ is the good neighbor. You know, and the only one who's going to save you from whatever it is. Mental illness, depression, a lost job, whatever it may be. Your friends are not God. They're not Jesus Christ. But only God has that love and that care that's going to literally come down and pick you up from being half dead, dress your wounds, take you to an innkeeper's home so, so there they may, may look after you until he returns for his child. Because see, that's the thing. It's our father. And, and that man laying on the ground is his child. And there's nobody going to love you like our Father. Um, good Samaritan comes along to, to help somebody out. You know, you know what? Why 
You would even do it. You know why I would even think of it or it would even move me to compassion, to care for a stranger. It's because God's love is in you. It's not you. It's the, our Father who loves His child. And because you're His child, the child of God, He, he through you, blows out His love that nobody else on earth is going to give to another human being. Except for God our Father. Why did, why did it come move you and not them? Because that's the love God has. And because you know God, it moved you. Because God's love lives in your heart. And that love is not just for you, but it is for them as well. And we got to remember, when we're stuck, when we're in depression, when something's not going right, when we lose our job, don't cry out to your friends. What an insult. I mean, come on. God holds the moon in, in, in His hand. I didn't think about it. God, our Father, holds the moon in, in His hand. Why don't we go to Dad for, for the help? And then sometimes when we're broke down and depressed, we kind of are waiting and expecting everybody to continue beating us down, continue breaking us down. But you got to remember that, that God loves you with all his heart. And no matter how far broke down you are, when people there come all of a sudden to, to lend you that hand? Maybe it's not your best friend. Maybe it's not your mother. Maybe it's not your dad. Maybe it's not the person you thought was ever going to help you. Just a stranger. But know and recognize it's the love of God, our Father, that, that comes to answer your prayer. Sometimes we, we want a giant miracle. So, so we know God is in our presence and we know God cares for us. But the greatest miracle is that you woke up. And the reason we wake up, the reason we keep going, the reason we fight, is because God loves us. And He's there, right there, in your presence. He gave you the strength to wake up. Sometimes we forget. It's the little stuff that, that God likes to do for us. God wants to do everything for us. Can, can we surrender it to God? Because He really wants to do it all. But, but sometimes in life, we want to do it. We, we want to do it. And when we fail, it breaks us down, hurts us. But recognize you don't fail in life because you've done something wrong. But because God wanted your attention. God wanted to be in your presence. God wanted to wake you up in the morning. God wanted you to carry you through the day. God is the good neighbor. Let's cry out to God. Love, love your, your neighbors as you would yourself. Who? Any man, woman, or child in need of God. Anyone in need of God. Well, in any fashion, form, or way. When they're in need. Any kind. Then they need God. Because the children of God have no need. They don't have no want. We don't have anyone or any need. Well, what do we need when, when God's in our in our very presence? So I want to leave you with three. I want to I want to give you all some hope and remind you that sometimes looking out for people's uh, uh, to help 
it's a setup for failure. Especially when, when your dad holds the very moon. Can you believe that? My dad is a god. Right? He's God. We know how to love. We know how to care. How much greater is God who invented love? So, hear me out. Psalm 142. With my voice, I cry out to you, Lord. With my voice, I plead for mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before Him. I tell my trouble before Him. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, there have, they have hidden trap, a hidden trap for me. Look to the right and see. There is none who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. Right? Don't think that you're the only one. Sometimes we, we think in life when we're being broke down and beat down, we're the only ones. This is God's children. What do, what do you think? Why do you think you became his child? And through tears and, and anguish and crying, disappointment and failure of how the whole world turned their back on you. But God will not turn his back to you. Never. This is his children. You cry out to Jesus Christ. He's the Lord. And he will save you. And it's not, I'm not talking save you like salvation of eternal life. Save your sanity. He will save your heart. He will save your situation. He will save your day. He'll save your morning. He'll save your lunch. He will do whatever he has to do to, to, to comfort his children. Now, a lot of times in life, as men and women, we, we get stuck in, in looking at, at the sin. Sin makes death. You understand that the law creates death. It, that's what it does. The Ten Commandments, death. That's what it produces. It doesn't produce eternal life. It produces death. And, and only Jesus can, can deliver us from that death. And that death comes in the will. Sometimes, when, as Christians, we start looking at people's sin. Sometimes, people go to... to Counselors, and, and you should recognize, you know, you're, you're buying a, a psychiatrist or whatever. They only care about you as far as your money goes. And they always have, tell you something to do. Go do that. Go do that. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Well, here's a pill. Take this pill and go do that. Take this pill and, and go do that. And I couldn't do it. Huh. Well, you ain't trying very hard. You gotta try. Here, I'll give you two pills. Take two pills and go do that. But, but if that person really cared for you, and church people, we gotta recognize this. It, care it is instead of pointing the finger, handing you a pill, and pointing the finger to go do this, and as you fail, Wow, how worthless are you? You're not trying. Instead of that, that they would be knocking on your door because when you're broke, you're broke. And you don't work. It's, that's why you're broke. It doesn't work. I don't work. You know what I mean? And you're broke. And what they would do if they really cared for you would be knocking on your door saying, Come on, son. Today we're going to the park. Come on, daughter. Today, we're going to go do something. And they literally grab them by the hand and drag them along and let's go do something. Because the only way they can do something is through that tender, loving care. As a child, grabbing onto daddy's hand. 
you know? And who's daddy? He's the spirit of love that lives inside our heart. That, that's what God does, is he loves his children. Who's going to do it? Who's going to make God's love seen for his children here on earth? You, us, us. And so we shouldn't be looking at people what they can't do. God only looks at what we can do. You got up this morning. You can do that. That's my boy. You got up. That's what God sees. What we can do. Why don't we see that? What we can do. And what we can do is trust God with all our heart, mind, and soul. I mean, think about it. That's what you can do. That, that's, what, that's what I can do. That's all I can do. That's eternal life. You understand? Now that's eternal life. And it's good enough. Sometimes a whisper. I can't even pray. I don't know how to pray. That's okay. Just whisper, help me God. And he will help you. Your friends ain't going to help you. The doctor ain't going to help you. They can't. You got to understand. They can't. But you know who can? You know who, who has the moon in his hand? Who all things are possible. All things are possible to those who believe in their Father, believe in His love for you. Everything. There ain't a mind on this earth broken, far, so far broken that, that God can't make it in. For all doors are open to God. We, we just got to, to surrender. Can, can I trust you can. You can. God is looking at what you can do. And if all you can do is say, help me. God is so loving. He wants to help you. That's what he wants. That's why, that's why we cry. That's why we fail. That's why the world believes us. Has no care. God pulls him away. So that only he can be in your presence to answer your prayer. That's what God wants. Right? So, it says, look to the right and see. There is none who takes notice of me. No refuge re remains to me. No one cares for my soul. I cry to you, O oh Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Sometimes our greatest persecutors are our very own thoughts. Right? Sometimes, like I say, we, we can see that robbers and the thieves who beat the man down on the ground. But what about with that robber or thieves is the devil? And the demons who whisper in your ear. Do you really think God loves you? I mean, come on. Remember yesterday? Remember that party 20 years ago? Oh my God. God don't love you. And you listen to Ask God to rescue you from those persecutors. Our own thoughts. The battle is against the demons and the devil in unseen places. Those little whispers in our ears that constantly tell ourselves that, that we don't measure up. We're not worthy. We don't matter. But God says you, you're so worthy. You matter so much. I, I, I'm just here to, to, to dress your wounds. I'm here. I left a bot paid for you in full price. Make sure you're coming to, to home. 
And that's the Holy Spirit, the innkeeper, who's going to take care of you until Jesus Christ comes and delivers you. Got to wash you up, clean you up. And what's that mean? Wash me up, clean you up. Strengthen your heart. Get you to understand waking up is big. You can do that. Every day is a new day to God. Yesterday is dead. We, we went to sleep and we died and we woke up in the morning and a new day has begun. And this day, God's only going to look at what you can do. They never think that, that you're too small, too little, too broken. To, to repair your relationship with God. Because a we'll whisper is good enough. It says, Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of the prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Right? This is a prayer or a psalm from, from David. And his beloved. One loved by God. But even David, God's beloved, is crying out. Desperation. Crying out through, through uh, depression. Feeling pretty hopeless. But, but he did, wasn't hopeless. Although I'm feeling horrible, I'm low, and I'm ready, I'm half dead. These robbers have beat me down. God will strengthen my soul. God will be my refuge. God will deliver me. So I'm his child. You are his child. No, no father would leave his child in the ditch, in the mud. Sometimes we wonder how, how we got so broke. But, but we forget. We haven't prayed in years. And all the world broke me down. How, how can I put my faith? In the unseen God, one of my brothers and sisters, whom I can see, hurt me, abused me, broke me. Sometimes in life, we see them there hurt, broke. No God, no nothing. It's half dead. Do, do we want to be the one? Who pulls out the finger and, oh, if you had only been that worthless. Because, you know, they know they're broken. They know they can't do the things. They're, but they're broke. But they matter. That's one thing you always see, that, that, that they, they're going to make a point. But I matter. Yeah, but you only matter if you get your life in order. If you go to college. If you'd start doing these things. But we got to recognize. Sometimes they can't. Sometimes what they need the very most. Is just the love a father would have. For their broken child. And that's what we need the most. Is God our father in our life. You just ain't going to get that, that agape. You're not going to find that love that a human being cannot produce. Even in your mothers and your fathers. Although God puts love in them, it doesn't compare to the love God has for His children. I want to leave you with one last read. Some good hope reminds you Sometimes them old granny hymns and them old grandpa hymns are, are good stuff. So let's go to a very old one. Listen, 
I have a friend so precious. I would sing this, but uh, you know, me singing is like blowing farts in the wind. And you don't want none of that, trust me. You just, uh, let me read you this as a poem. It's still nice. I have a friend so precious, so very real to me. He loves me with a tender love. He loves me faithfully. I could not live apart from him. I love him. I love to feel him nigh. And so we dwell together, my Lord and I. Sometimes I'm faint and weary. He knows that I am weak. And he bids me lean on me. His help I'll gladly seek. He leads me in the paths of life. Beneath a sunny sky, and so we walk together, my Lord and I. I tell him all my sorrows, I tell him all my joys, I tell him all that pleases me. I tell him what annoys. He tells me what I ought to do, he tells me what to try, and so we talk. Together, my Lord and I. He knows how I am longing, some weary soul to win, and so he bids me go and speak a loving word for him. He bids me to tell his wondrous love and why he came to die. And so we work together, my Lord and I. Put that one in your heart and remember tomorrow or whatever to get you through that day. That, that we talk together, we walk together, and we work together. My Lord and I. And that goes for you. See you next time.